What's up, ladies and gentlemen, everybody out there? It's Philip20, and I'm back. Check us out. Today's video is how to kill your batteries. Today's topic is how to kill your batteries. So, I've got some literature right here that came with my charge controller and I'm going to explain to you what it's talking about. <clears throat> Not watching your charge voltage and verify that you are charging to the voltage supplied by the manufacturer of the battery. Now what's important about this is you don't overcharge your battery or undercharge your battery continuously every day. So you got to be particularly careful with that. Make sure with a voltage meter that is a true RMS voltage meter that your battery is being charged properly. And if you don't know what true RMS means, you got to go look it up. I'm not going to explain to you what it is. Not verifying temperature compensation neutral point. Typically 25 degrees Celsius and the millivolts per degree Celsius per cell. Typically negative 5 millivolts. So the hotter it gets, the lower the voltage that you need to put in to the battery bank. Charge controllers have this ability to do this. You have to input your manufacturer's specific temperature reduction voltage reduction or temperature increase voltage reduction. So if the temperature goes down, you can increase the voltage a little. If temperature goes up, you decrease the voltage a little. So. <clears throat> Part three, not watching to verify the absorb or equalize time is set properly and the equipment actually charges for that period of time. Some equipment will have settings like end amps that can terminate absorb early and if set up wrong can damage a battery. Now, if you don't do everything that your charge controller says to do basically you don't have to read this but if you don't have a charge controller that is typically a nice one for instance i've got a midnight classic 150 and you know you have to go through this whole thing and read it this is just some putting some more information out there for you another way to kill your battery not having enough charge current or solar panels to properly charge the size of the batteries you have. Consult the battery manufacturer for minimum charge current. So, if you want to have 6,000 batteries and 25 watts of solar, it's not going to work is what they're saying. You have to have a specific size battery bank for a specific amount of solar panels. So, you mean if you don't have a big enough solar array, the batteries won't properly desulfate during the charging, you know, so if you don't charge it properly, like, I, like it's saying, you have to charge with a minimum amount of amps going into your battery bank. Whenever you fill up your battery with water, if you're using flooded batteries, like this is flooded, I've got flooded lead acid batteries sitting over there in the corner, just doing nothing. They're happy sitting there doing nothing inside a sealed box. Using tap water or other liquids instead of distilled water in a flooded battery. The minerals in the tap water will destroy the battery. There you go, that's pretty much exactly right. Don't use tap water. Water, oh, it doesn't matter, distilled water or this or that. I highly recommend you build your own distillery and distill your own water because it's cheap. Uh, cheaper, let's say that. And then if you want to, you consider I have to pay every three months or so 25 gallons to 28 gallons of water for these batteries here behind me. So, and I haven't even got two rows hooked up at the bottom because they're, you know, some of them are super flat. So, and uh, also keeping all your connections clean. So if your connectors are not clean, you gotta go and clean them. If they're corroding or whatever, you've 
gotta go clean them, then you put anti-corrosive material on there, it'll stop the corrosion from happening, or at least slow it down a lot. This will also kill your batteries. Not using all equal linked interconnect battery cables on each string. It is important that all strings be wired exactly the same way. Any variance in resistance on one string versus another will cause an imbalance and the batteries will be dead in less than six months. Well, moving on. I'm sure there's plenty of people not paying attention to that right there, but it doesn't matter. Using more than two or three parallel strings and not using something like a common bus bar, okay? So if you don't know what that means is what you can do is you can put a positive and a negative bus bar across your battery bank and then you tie your parallel strings into that. See, if you got you know two running in parallel, it's not that big a deal. If you got three running in parallel, it's getting a little bit iffy. But if you got six running in parallel, battery banks, 12 volts, six parallel, then you're probably gonna be uh, handed down with the situation of it's gonna kill your batteries because it's charging and balancing. So one side will get heavily charged and it'll lose a ton of water. The other side will not get charged hardly at all and it won't use as much water. So you'll notice that you should be able to put the same amount of water in all your battery cells every month. So use equal length battery cables and use bus bars is the best way they're saying to do it. Not making sure that lead acid batteries get a full charge at least once a week. Now, if you don't charge your batteries up completely, once a week and you're discharging them that's going to kill your battery so you shouldn't do that you should charge them up once a week routinely using more than 50 percent of the capacity of lead acid battery using more than half of the battery capacity drastically shortens the battery life once in a while is fine but on a daily basis it will kill them in months so don't drain your battery bank below 50% if you got lead acid batteries. Uh, it's, I recommend you don't go below 70%. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, I've done it before and my batteries still function, but it's not something that I was happy to do. Now, batteries need to be cooled as well as warmed up. So not leaving ample space between cells for cooling. We recommend at least one inch for cells for cooling. Please ask the manufacturer what they recommend for how much space between each battery that you put. Midnight Classic says one inch. If you're charging the crap out of them, you got a lot of power to charge them, definitely want to separate them. Mine are separated. Now, trust the state of charge meter. They can get off over time and will give you false readings. You need to verify that specific gravity and or verify the charge voltage is being met. Never rely on, never rely on state of charge. It is just a good quick reference. So if you got a, a Whizbang Junior on your classic charge controller that tells you the percentage of your battery charge like i've got it uh you know on this one here so it tells you the percentage of the battery charge and by that position this battery will give me that ability but with lead acid batteries you can definitely look at specific gravity highly re recommend if you're a solar guy Go to eBay and find you a 15 and $20 refracto meter. I'll grab that and show it to you. Right here is my ACT refracto meter. I've been using this for about seven or eight months now. It comes with a screwdriver, okay? And underneath this little cap right here, you're gonna tighten or loosen the screw until 
when you put water on here, it'll zero it out. Once you got water on here, distilled water, by the way, the reason why I use distilled water because it doesn't have material in it that is absorbed into the water, making the water heavier. So you use, you know, you put your water in there, distilled water, again, a distilled water is all I use for my batteries and my battery testing equipment. You'll put your screwdriver in there, adjust it as necessary, you'll look through the side glass, and then you'll close it with the water in there, and it'll show you the line that the water is at. Once you find the line, you zero it to zero where it says water line. Once you're done with that, you uh, take a brand new dropper, you soak up the fluid, you put a drop on there, you close it, and you look through there and it shows you how heavy the water is. Specific gravity test is the most accurate way to see if your batteries are gone yet. If you're having trouble with your batteries and you don't have one of these, you need to get one and test every individual cell, write every cell's numbers down because it tells you the specific gravity number, uh, the minimum is 1.2 before it says recharge so if you charge it for six days straight and it still says 1.2 your battery is pretty much gone so if you want to have a premium battery you're looking at 1.25 or above 1.3 is better you know if you can get it there ever probably never but for my batteries I use 1.3 because they're nickel cadmium if I was doing it with lead acid, I'd probably look around 1.28, 1.27. So that's going to be what you're going to want to have with one of these. These are fractometers. They're super cheap. This one came from China. I recently found one in Cal uh, California. It's got a nice little case. And if you buy one of these, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and get the test droplets. So you want to get... 300 of these for a dollar they'll last you for the you know the rest of the battery's life uh, if not longer another battery bank too you test each one every month and then you're pretty good so that puts you in a position to provide the best charging specifics for your batteries so this is pretty much how to kill your batteries Thanks for watching. This is Philip 20 with Solar Power, Electricity, and Electronics. And I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. There's lots more content coming. Click the subscribe button below. Make sure you come back for more because there's great content always coming up every day in this channel. See you next time. Peace.